The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. You are now entering the all-consuming realm of Shay's paranormal chat, where the things that are better left unsaid are actually said. Shut up and sit down. You're listening to Shay's paranormal chat. Paranormal podcasting done Shay's way. Tons of fun. Dude, seriously? A bit sarcastic. Hashtag investigator, not hunter. But always real. Don't get your panties in a twist. Oh my god, really? This is real, raw conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Here we go. Assuming nothing's wrong, which I'm assuming. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shay's Paranormal Chat. Um, I started on the wrong show tonight, um, so we are a few minutes late. Um, But here we go. I'm going to unmute. We have the one, the only, the awesome Miss Kelly McCarvel. Hello, hello. And, of course, we have our very special guest, Alita Kinley. Hey, guys. Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for coming back. We're excited. Yeah. Yay. We're going to um we're going to do a couple shout outs here. I started in the wrong show, so it might take a few <laughs> minutes for people to um get here, but so far we have Mama Pat in the house. We have Wolf, we have Miss Jen, we have Matt, and of course we have Kim. Um Matt is going to delete my false show that I started on accident because Matt's a sweetheart. So, um, I, uh, I forget where we were. I think, um, last time you were here, we, uh, talked about the, um, Melvern Manor book, the pay to pay the piper, pay the piper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if anybody missed that show, you guys, it was a few weeks ago. You should go back and check it out because um, it was quite fantastic. Um, it was my crazy. theory. Yeah, my theory yeah. on who killed the Moore family in Velisca. Yeah. yeah. It was um, a lot of points, and I saw a lot of the articles that you based some of it on. and um, So it was pretty cool. So if um, let's see. Basic genealogy, parapsychology, historical researcher, paranormal investigator, author of two books. Um, quite busy lady, aren't you? Oh, well, I try to be, yeah. I'm a <laughs> landfill <laughs> operator, too. <laughs> yeah, yay! Um, oh, yeah, another. We don't want to be bored, come on. For a baby mom, I guess. I've got little dogs. Oh. Um... Well, you want to talk about Nebraska hauntings this time? Because I think last time we were going to talk about Nebraska hauntings, and I got, like, sidetracked on something else, and yeah. Yeah, and then we had to cut it short. Um, yeah. So, well, actually, the show was over an hour long, but we just happened to have to end it before... Oh, I had a great time talking with you guys and stuff. I Well, see, because I sit, most of the time, I, you have a lot of Iowa people on, and I love the history, like the paranormal history of Iowa. I love the stories, and, um, well, my daughter and my son live in Iowa, so I, 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 that's how I got into all that and stuff. And actually, I'm studying a new a lady. And I, I, at first, I thought she was, you know, from Nebraska. So I was like, oh, rah, rah, I'm 
Wigan, Nebraska's got this haunted ghost lady from the 1800s, you know, that she was checking out um, hauntings and stuff. Nope, she was from Des Moines, Iowa. And I was like, God damn it, they have them all. So, (laughs) (laughs) he's like, I like hearing your stories. Yep. I'm popular in Iowa because they don't have to deal with me in person. They're so far away. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) No. I like it because you, you're funny and I like your stories and I, I really find a lot of this stuff that you're you're into really interesting the yeah my, my, you've been and stuff I like the pictures mm-hmm. yeah yeah we uh we have fun yeah let's see okay so so my haunted Nebraska is it different locations. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's basically, I just do, do, like, I think I put 11 short stories in the book, um, different things I investigated, some of them urban legends, some were actual investigations that really had extraordinary stories behind them and stuff, and, you know, I found that, you know, even the urban legends, you know, uh, like the Seven Sister Road, uh, I looked into it, and I went and I actually investigated. Actually, I had nothing happen, but that doesn't mean that nothing happens. It just means nothing happened when I was there. But I looked into the history and stuff, and I could not find anything about some guy hanging his daughters or, or a boy hanging his sisters. But I did find a true story about, um... A boy, a little boy named William Hamilton, he was basically tortured out there in that area. He was shot full of holes, and he was probably raped. He was in a mud hole. So I'm thinking maybe the screams that they hear is probably that hearing the little boy live that morning over. What you location know. is this? Where? Seven Sister Road. It's outside in Nebraska City, about five miles okay. south. And uh, when I went through the history, that's the only story I could find, and I included that in the book. And yeah, it's it's an urban legend because there, you know, if a man had hung his daughters, it'd been in the news. Nebraska yeah. City had pa- papers clear back to eighteen sixty, even before. And uh, a boy hung his sisters on these seven hill. It's it's just a far fetched story. It never happened. You know that I could I could not find any evidence that it happened. I I cannot say it did not happen. I just not find any evidence it didn't happen. And uh, the story I did find was about this little boy, um, William Hamilton. He was eleven years old and. Uh, cattle. They they lured him out there, and they stole his dad's cattle, and they sh- raped him, and they shot him full of holes. How and they caught the, Yeah, yeah, and you know, and there's some real stories behind these locations. You just you have to dig and you have to find them, and and I I went there's uh oh gosh I don't know I've ha- I've done. I've investigated for a long time, and there's a lot of different stories in mind. I think I was telling you about the funniest story that ever happened to me. And actually, I thought it was some kind of candid camera thing. But um, our team got asked to go investigate in Lincoln, Nebraska, in a historic North Bottoms area. This was a place where a Russian-German Volga... Um, immigrants uh, basically had their community back in the late 1800s or late 1900s. And um, we went to investigate this house, and the claims were that this lady said that the she had, like, a demons in her house, and they were, they were, like, something about when she was asleep, they would climb up on her face and suck the air out of her nose. And and she was hearing them run around and stuff. And so we, we got called. And actually, the uh, Scott Colburn from the Exploring um, Phenomenon, he's done, he's run the longest paranormal radio show in the 
Well, basic, I think, in the world since 1984. But, <coughs> excuse me. Um, he called us to come in there because this lady had contacted them and had contacted Nebraska Paranormal Society. And he thought that we could help because on our team we have a couple nurses. And so we went to this house and when we walked in, I'm... This lady, you know, she was a spitting image of Medea, Medea, and I thought it was, we were getting punked, I thought, you know, because it was the whole nine yards, she had leopard furniture and zebra this, and her computer was on demons.com, and and she was all wound up and and stuff but we I was seriously you know check into it and I had recorded music you know old German vulgar music and stuff you know, from a Lutheran church and I was going to try to play that and see if we could get some stuff out and so I um I get this playing and this lady's like, oh my gosh do like that let's play some Aretha Franklin and, and, and I'm like oh my god so we play Aretha Franklin and then we get the ghost box out and stuff and she hears her some I don't know she hears something but she thinks she hears her dead brother Broderick on there and so then she calls the whole family and she's like, I hear my brother Broderick on this ghost box and stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, we're, you know, this is for real. Because <laughs> this is a really small house and stuff. And about that time, I, I go outside and I said, well, I'll go around the outside of the house and, you know, spray the foundation and, you know, try to cleanse it. <laughs> Excuse me. You okay? I think she muted herself. Okay. Yep, I need a drink. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're and, fine. And and so I go around and and I spray the foundation and I'm looking around to see if maybe, you know, there's animals getting in her house and stuff. And I notice a crawl hole up there. So I go back in the house and I ask her, I said, her name was Cynthia. And I asked Cynthia, I said, do you have a ladder and something? I'm going to look up on that crawl hole and see if you don't have some squirrels, you know, because Lincoln has squirrels. I just remembered the story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so... And so I go back in, I go back in the house and stuff, and, and I know she goes over the phone and stuff. She calls the Lincoln Fire Department and tells them <laughs> she needs a ladder out here because she's got ghost hunters and there's demons in her attic. Are you kidding? And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, we're going to get arrested or something on news or something. I was like, I cannot believe this is happening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just knew we were on Canon camera. We were getting punked because it, 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 this was the craziest thing ever. And, and, I'm and, and oh my god! And I, I that was about more than I could handle. And um, I go back in the house and stuff. And and now this time I said, well, then I'll go downstairs and see if maybe I can. I can, like, get out of this craziness. and okay, wait, wait, wait. Is the fire department on their way, though? No, <laughs> they refused to come. They okay. refused to come, and at least the news <laughs> didn't show up. But anyway, um, I go downstairs, and, and you know, I, ha I, I end up communicating with the spirit. I had the spirit come up in my face, and he was like, he was like, more and more and more and more and more. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? You know, and, and so I couldn't think. I'm thinking Mori means death, Mori and stuff. And uh, it, it means something later. <laughs> and I go up, back up there. And next thing I know, she's in the bathtub. And she's, she's stuck in the bathtub. She's in the bathtub because she had to get these demons off of her. And she was practicing <laughs> some kind of hoodoo. And she was in the bathtub pouring herbs over herself. <laughs> and 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 oh my, oh I my. think she was smoking the herb. <laughs> <laughs> and there's water coming out of the bathtub, coming out into the living room because she's stuck in the bathtub. She's, she's a great big lady. She's just like Madeira, Madeira or whatever. <laughs> and um, 
Chris, the nurse in there goes in there and, and another RN. There are two RNs with us, and they go in there and they're trying to help her get out of the tub. And she wants Chris's husband to come in there. And Chris, is like, my husband is not coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And, um, oh, God, that night, all night was crazy. Well, later on, I when I'm doing the research and stuff, I, I come to find out there was a young man who died on, next door and stuff. He was the German Volga thing. Well, they're historically racist people. More is German, old German for, for Moorish, black, African. They were pissed off because they were racist. They, they were racist against that lady, you know, and... I, you know, they, you know, the only advice we could give her is that she just needs to take back her house. You know, yeah. the, she doesn't have demons in her house. There's no demons up to her right. and stuff. And, you know, they, you know, they're just going to have to coexist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she has a, it sounds like she has enough problems. She really doesn't need any racist. Ghosts uh, yeah, in the yeah. House. she was walking around. She was practicing hoodoo, and and and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with hoodoo and stuff. It if is, you know what you're doing, <laughs> you're not crazy. Yeah, it, she don't need to be reading demons dot com for one. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> she because she just knew there was demons in there, and <laughs> oh, and then one time on that ghost box that night, she was like, she was going, "Can you ask her to talk to uh to Spade?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not asking to talk to Spade." You know, because that's racist. And I said, you know, I'm just not going to do it. Well, her whole boyfriend was named Spade and he got murdered in Los Angeles. And it was like, he's not, these people are not coming through there. You know, I, I'm i not that kind of ghost communicator. I, I mean, I, I'm not like Kim Russo and I'm not going to dial up all these ghosts to talk to you. <laughs> you know? And it was, it was not happening. I was so embarrassed. I was, yeah. You know, I just knew we were getting punked. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's even worse. It was reality. You weren't being punked. <laughs> no. We got a hold of Scott Colbert, and we asked him later, is this real? Did you even check this out? He's like, no, but she was real adamant. She had demons in her house. Well, so sure she was. Yeah, I like, gone. Was it was it you that got scared by the the, the squirrel? Oh yeah, the raccoon. So you tell the, you oh, gotta tell that story. Oh, oh my god. Now, I, my my mascara is already down my cheeks. You gotta get that one out of the way. <laughs> oh my god. Years ago and so if I I've always done ghost hunting and people you know come in fact they call me the ghost lady here in town, but anyway, it was this this girlfriend of mine, she had this, like, she stayed out at this house, and it was in, like, this marsh area and stuff, and she was, like, calls me up one night, I have a ghost in my attic, and it's, I can hear it, you know, it's hissing <laughs> and stuff, and I'm like, oh, my God, okay, I'll come out there. I go up there, and I go up, and I stuff, I get a ladder. She had one of them, like, pull-down things in her house. She and I go have to and, call the fire department. <laughs> no, I didn't call the fire department. <laughs> and I, I pull it down, and I climb up there, and I face this freaking raccoon. He's just looking at me, he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, he's pissed off. <laughs> I was like, you don't have no, can you have a raccoon call somebody with a gun or something to get it out of there? <laughs> But you, need animal animal you need animal control. Yeah, you're not part of the investigator. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, pissed off raccoon, just, it sounds like a demon. They're scary. They are, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, oh there's... I've been doing an investigation where they, they, they've heard, they just knew there was ladies screaming outside. And stuff, and I go, oh, what is going on? So we go out there and stuff, and I was like, it's a fox. They sound oh, yeah. just like a woman screaming. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And I said, no, that's a fox. Oh. And stuff. 
Oh, yeah. We'll be in old, abandoned, dilapidated buildings, and I'm wandering around by myself perfectly fine. Don't know what spirits I'm going to run into, but let there be, like, a raccoon in there, and I'm out. Like, oh, yeah. Done. <laughs> done. Get that hey, out of here. Scary. I will go back in. They're <laughs> scary, especially at eye level. I'm not quite sure this big as bears, I swear yeah. to God. We had this huge. huge one when um I was, like, six. Well, the first summer I was six. The second summer I was seven. So I was really young. We had this, we went camping and we had this raccoon that would come like every night. And, you know, people kept saying they're dangerous. You can't leave stuff out like that. And the next year it would come back and it might not have been the same one, but in my brain it was. So I loved them until, until I got a little older and I came face to face with one and realized they're nasty. Oh, yeah, they can be. I, a friend of mine had a pet one named Joey. And this sucker, <laughs> if you even walked by its cat food dish, it'd fucking attack you. <laughs> and I was like, fuck that. I had that guy's farm. He had a goat that'd kick your ass. He had a <laughs> raccoon that'd bite you. It's like, shit, nothing's safe here. His mom was mean. <laughs> was, nope, <laughs> not doing it. Oh, I don't like mice either. <laughs> no, no, I've had, I've had freaking that little rodents. I hate those yeah. things. When I was yeah. um, when I was like uh, I, th- I was like twenty, twenty one. I was married, so I was a, I was probably nineteen or twenty. Um, I was still married, I should say. So sometime somewhere between nineteen and twenty one, and uh, we, my husband, me, and my father. I think my mother was there too. Went to go on my porch. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, Dad, who's in your truck? And he, he's like, nobody's in my truck. But there's something in his truck. There's this, there's this damn raccoon holding on to the steering wheel like it's <laughs> driving, right? Oh so my I'm, God. <laughs> I'm dying. All of a sudden, a second one pops up in the truck, and it's got a thing of Wendy's French fries. <laughs> and it's eating it. Now I'm almost peeing. All of a sudden, a third. The baby pops up, and it looks like they're going on a family trip. I'll never forget it. Oh my god! Yeah, oh, I think they family trip to Wendy's. Left. Yeah, it, they were sitting there holding the French fries, eating it one at one at a time. Yeah. Oh yeah. god, they are cute though. I mean, From but they're not yeah. cute. They're not cute when they're pissed off though. <laughs> That's a flying mice. See, this is this is why the show's <laughs> we get off a topic, but it's fun. <laughs> they uh, are. They're just flying mice. It's like mice yeah. with superpowers. I told you last week. I had no or it might have been the other show. I'm on too many shows. Um, <laughs> so my teenage son, sorry, I'm interrupting. My teenage yeah, son ahead. wandered upstairs for just a moment and all he heard me say is they're like flying mice with superpowers, and he's looking at me like what the hell are you smoking, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, Go ahead. It's all good, Caden. It's all good. <laughs> My kid would just shake their head and walk out like, I don't even want to know. Um, I, when I thought that bat or a mouse, I really thought a bat was coming, going to come flying when we were on um, at Laconia State School a few weeks ago. I thought this mouse or this bat was going to come flying out of this little alcove thing. And I literally stepped behind my sister and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sacrificing you to the bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're on location doing an, this investigation and we're trying to do this experiment where we're playing a game and we're playing like red Rover. So we're standing in a line and we've got our hands all linked and we're not supposed to be moving or anything. And there's this bat the size of Texas flying around in there. And I'm oh, like God. trying to avoid the damn thing. Right. And so to make it better, one of the guys I'm with, is they're like, don't worry. It only will hit you if it's sick. I'm like, oh, that makes it so much better. Thank you. Yeah, because being a sick bat is, you know. It only has rabies, you know. Right. right. I'm like, this is not helping. Yeah, I cry. (laughs) Yeah, I cry. And I, I have no shame in saying it. I would cry. Nope. I hate him. Yeah, I did too. Um, I don't even know where we can go now after all these stories, man. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, some reason people get on the show and they start telling these funny animal stories. This isn't the first, <laughs> second, third, or fourth show that this has happened. And we just, it's so fun. We just keep going with it, man. So, so <laughs> what was the best paranormal experience that didn't involve an animal? <laughs> the best or? Yeah. Oh, let me see. I kind of had like quite a few. Uh, gosh, do you want to, you want one from the book or just? Oh, I don't care. Um, mm, gosh, I'm She's thinking. On the spot. She's on the spot. Yeah. Oh, I can talk about Spring Ranch. That's in the book and stuff. Uh, Spring Ranch is this little haunted cemetery that is, uh, it's in Clay County and south of, like, Glenville. And it's off, like, Highway 74. And Spring Ranch is known for the lynching of Elizabeth Taylor and her brother, Tom Jones. And... I've been down to that cemetery a couple times and one time this I read this in the book. One time my husband and I we took the kids down there. We were going to scare them and it was like on it was it was in August of I want to say it was like August of 2001 or whatever but we were down there and it was right after a thunderstorm and stuff and we were like going to spook the kids and stuff and we were all out there and we're standing they have like a potter's field where they had buried unmarked graves and stuff and my husband and my son started walk across this potter's grave potter's field you know to the other side to read the marker and my daughter and I are at the car, and you could feel an air after it was after a thunderstorm had went through, and it was there it was all kinds of like static in the air, and it just you 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 know that kind of feel like something's gonna happen, you know you're on your edge, and about that time, I got the mental image of one of them old hearse, horse, hearse carriage coming in, in the, in the, into the cemetery and stuff. And, but it, it, this was at night, but it was like in day, the image was in day and you could smell the sweaty horses and stuff and everything. And my daughter all of a sudden was like, mom, we got to go, we got to go. And she just started bawling. And stuff, and then and, and I'm starting to get scared because she's getting scared, and so my husband and son start walking across the field, and my husband says he looks down at the field, and he says it's like snakes slithering in the grass, you know, and they were just like fog snakes, and they were slithering all over down the grass, and he says he would have ran back to the car, but he was, like, kind of standing his ground. He's kind of, like, macho, and he didn't want to show the kids, but my son, he ran back to the car. So we left. Well, before we left, the whole tree line around the cemetery, and this is on the Little Blue River, started doing these, like, it sounded like an old movie, like a Fort Apache movie, like, oh, whoa, 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 you know, like bird calls and all kinds of crap, and this is at night, and we're like, oh, my God, what is going on? And we got in the car, and we left. We didn't see a word until we get on, like, Highway 74, and we're like, what just happened? You know, because when, I don't know if it's the same for you, but when paranormal things happen to me, they really don't scare me. They just, like, okay, did... What's happening? What you would you know? They kind of take it like uh, by shock, you know, and stuff they moves. Startle you, but not in a scared way. They just no, you know, I don't scream. If like if something moves in my house, I'm more like, oh man, that was cool, you know. But did that just happen? You know, did I see it? Like, it, you know. But anyway. We were more like that, and we get back home, and we get on the computer, and we all gather around, and we're punching up, like, haunted things, haunted this, you know, haunted spring wrench. Find out that in 1864, there was a whole Indian massacres up and along the um, Little Blue River, and when it, anyway, it was in August, about the same time we were there. I think it was August 15th we were there, and it was August 16th or whatever. They had Indian massacres. So, I don't know if our experience has something to do with that or something to do with what I found out about the cemetery. So, 
it was it was it was experience that my daughter she still talks to about that she won't go back there absolutely refuses says I'm never ever going back to that cemetery again but you know there was nothing that scary but it's so uh, you know I it was the feeling she had and she said she hated it and she'll never go back there again um I'm trying to read. I, I, I'm echoing. Sorry. Um, Ronald says hello. Hello, Ronald. Amanda. And I can't even start to even pronounce what that Saskatchewan? word is. Saskatchewan. 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 I think I'm saying it right. Hopefully. Better than I would have done. I got a sneeze. Sorry. Oh, go oh, no. <laughs> It's that time of year. That's when I'm in coughing and sneezing, and I'm like, oh, God, I'm getting a cold. Sorry, that was really loud. Yeah, it's all I'm sure there's a mute somewhere, but I wasn't going to find it in time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we had, before I forget, everybody say happy birthday to Alita. It's her birthday. And I'm Aww. so happy, happy she's birthday. spending her birthday with us. You don't want me to sing, trust me. Yeah, it's okay. My sister <laughs> did for me today already, and I was like, "Oh my god, I love you." But yeah, better uh, keep my daughter's a job. singer. I don't know where she got it from, but <laughs> well, actually, both my girls can sing. Actually, so. oh wow, yeah. Um, and we had a question from Wolf. Okay, he wants to know what was your scariest moment during an investigation besides the animals. Let's. What was your scariest <laughs> paranormal <laughs> experience? Mm, scariest. Um, I would have been run out of an investigation before. Uh, that one was in Aurora, Nebraska. I wrote that about in the book, too, and stuff. Uh, I... In fact, that involved a thunderstorm, too. There was a thunderstorm outside and everything. We were investigating this house, and there was aggressive male spirit in this house. And I literally, for some reason, felt like my head was like in a vice. I about I couldn't stand it. I literally had to go outside. It was just like you had to leave. It was so the only thing I can think of is that I was forced out because the minute I walked outside, it quit. Another wow. gal that was with us, she had climbed up in the, um, she, uh, another attic story, she had climbed up in the attic and then felt a stabbing pain in the side, and she had to walk out. So, I'm thinking that he, he didn't like women, and when I went back and, you know, the history, there was, you, there were stories that he didn't like women, and I think he just, like, it was forced out, and but yeah, I was kind of upset, and I was a little bit scared that night because I didn't. I've never had anything like that happen before. Um, Sorry, I don't know if it wasn't scared. It was just, it was just kind of like, whoa, you know. I mean, I'm trying to think of scared. I'm trying to think of scared. I like, screamed when this. I screamed at once at the uh, squirrel cage jail. Um, it's a jail in Iowa. It's, it's set yep. on pie. And Kelly, I'm sure, knows yep. it. But, yep. It's a cool place. I was in there, and we were walking around there. And it never occurred to me to ever look up. But I looked up, and what do I oh. see? This arm sticking out of the yep. thing. And, and I, it, I literally... It took me by surprise, and I screamed, and I have no idea why I screamed, but I did. And the poor gal was with me. She jolted and about fell down, and 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 her husband's her husband, um, Paul. We told him about it. He comes running in there because he heard me. He goes, "Oh, I know. I seen that up there earlier." And I said, "Well, why didn't you tell us that?" Because they had the mannequin, jump, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump arm to show, you know, people used to stick their arms out. And <laughs> well, I felt so stupid. <laughs> and everything. I, but I, I see Sally House and I didn't feel nothing. I didn't have, I, I mean, I had impression at the Sally House of, uh, 
a boy in the upstairs closet. I think he'd been abused. And, and uh, I, uh, a wagon outside, you know, with caskets. And when I talked to uh, Deborah Pickman about it, she told me there was a story that they were told, you know, clear back in the 90s about an, a wagon accident that had happened. Because actually the front of the Sally House is actually the back of the Sally House. And um, the front is the back now. Well, the front used to be the back now. So, it's all turned around. But scary moments. I've been in a lot of different places, and I've had I've had experiences in my own home. Like, oh, I was going to tell you about the yuhu. This is a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> this happened to our, my house in Roseland, Nebraska. Okay. Uh, I was sitting on the toilet one day, and this house was a brick house, and I was sitting on the toilet one day, and I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden I hear in my ear, just loud as hell, you! I was like, I about fell off the toilet, scrambling, I was like, what the hell was that? Excuse me, can I finish my business? <laughs> yes, yes, and it, you know there was nobody in the house and stuff and everything, and and I knew we had a spirit and everything, but she didn't usually, you know, I'd only ever seen her once and stuff. Other people have seen her multiple times, but she never said you or never have spoke to me ever, you know. <laughs> but that you, I was like. Oh my God! That's I was like everybody says. Have you ever heard disembowelled voice? Well, yeah, but I have to tell you my story. I was sitting on toilet. <laughs> Excuse me. No, oh, no. So I've had like all kinds of crazy experience, crazy things happen in my life. It's like, oh my God. How long have you been um, investigating? About. Uh, well, I think my whole life, I, you know, my mom, my mom claimed to see spirits and stuff. And I always was curious what she was seeing or if she was seeing this and stuff. And when I started to have experiences of my own, that's how I told you, I started to research this because I was so worried that, you know, I was going to, I was like crazy or something. So I had to make, to make sure that what you know, if these, this is what I'm encountering. I'm going to find them and I'm going to find out about them. Yeah. You know, and that's how I started doing it. Uh, but yeah, I've been like, gosh, I've been like ghost hunting and that kind of crap and doing stuff with folk magic for, I don't know, probably a good 20, 25 years. Well, my head, well, I've been married 28 years, so before my husband, so. So a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that? Uh, what's folk magic? I do. You know, I, I kind of joke and stuff with, in which I help people with problems, you know. There's, uh, for one, one example, I use this one. This lady, she had bought a candle off of, off of SD. Do you know what that is? Like, it's some kind of like, it's like eBay, it's SD, like home oh, products yeah. and stuff. And she bought it from... A uh, magic practitioner and stuff, and she didn't get it in a timely manner that she thought. She left this person a bad review. When she got the candle and she lit it, it smelled <laughs> like cats. Oh, everything in her house started dying. Her plants, her you know, and she and stuff, and, and she and when she got a hold of me, and I said, okay, I'll come over and I'll look see what's going on because she was hearing voices in her house. She was uh, having all kinds of weird stuff happen. And so I got talking to her about it and everything and stuff, and I cut this candle open. It had pins with some black gooey stuff in it and everything. And I said, well, here, I'll you know, I'll take it, and I take it and. and I uh, I buried it and I put sulfur and black salt on it and I when I talked to her about it and I told her I said you whether or not you know that lady deserved getting a bad review you probably should apologize to her and and she was like well why would I want to apologize to her I said because you take the power away from her 
when you apologize. It may not, you know, I mean, subconsciously you do that, you know. Apologize to her, and I, I try to break the hex, you know. Because I'm sorry, I believe in magic. And uh, I don't, you know, I, I firmly believe in magic. And people's thoughts and stuff, you know, can affect other people. So... I, I do stuff like that. I help people with them kind of problems and everything. I don't do, I don't charge people. You know, a lot of people are going to and getting charged to, for like cleansings and stuff. If I live around here and stuff, I help them. I help another lady on a regular basis and stuff. Because I just try different things to see what works. I'll mix herbs together. Whatever works. You know, because nobody knows what a ghost is. For sure, nobody knows what any of this exactly. is for sure, and it might be just it might be they have to do with the power of the mind. As long as they think they're getting cured, and they might be cured, you know. Yeah. I I mean, I just want to help people, and that's what I do. I uh, I do a lot. I like home investigations. A lot a lot of things like. I I don't talk about because here in Nebraska, and I'm sure it's a lot of same in Iowa. There's deeply religious people, and uh, they don't they don't understand ghosts, yeah. and they they think these are demons and evil spirits and and stuff. And I'm not saying there isn't some bad crap going on because there is. You know, I've had a problem with my neighbor's house. I mean, they were worshiping Satan over there, and they they you know I don't I um. I, I'm i open to open religions and you can do, but what they were doing was worshipping negativity. You know, they, they weren't positive. They were college kids and stuff, and they had to have a priest over there to cleanse it. And then on, like, 4th of July this year, I had this lady screaming outside, and so I got out there. And I go, and I call 911, and I go down over there, and another girl comes out and stuff, and, and this lady don't even live there. And I'm like, what the heck is going on and stuff? And and the when the when the ambulance came because she was saying she was dying, the police came too. And well, come to find out, this lady didn't live there. She was standing over the lady who was who lived in the apartment with a butcher knife. Oh Jesus! You know this. This is oh. the same apartment that they had a priest over there cleansing because they were doing their satanic worship stuff over there. Whatever they were doing, I, I don't, you know, I don't know what they were doing. That's just what I was told. Yeah. So I ended up putting black salt around my property. And it's like, I don't let that stuff coming over here because, you know, I don't know what the, you know, but I help, usually help people with problems like that. And there's one lady had problems with Santeria here in town. She found boxes buried in her yard with... They were like they were they were spirit boxes. They were binding spirits to the boxes, and then they would bury these boxes under trees and stuff and everything. Well, when she moved into the house, they didn't like where these trees were, so they dug up these trees. They found these boxes. They let their kids open them, and they opened them through the beads and through everything that was inside the spirit boxes, all over the place and stuff. And her, and then next thing you know, her whole house is flipping haunted. And stuff, so I went over there, and that's the first time I ever cleansed a house that moaned. The house actually moaned. It was it was the craziest. Like it, it reminded me of like the uh, house in California. You know, when, about when they have an earthquake, the house makes this moan and shifting noise. Well, that's what this house did when I cleansed it the first time. I had to go back a second time. I I go back there on a regular basis. And stuff, because this lady's a medium. She always will have ghost problems. She always will live in a haunted place. Because, because mediums her, will. Not necessarily yeah, the yeah, house. Yeah, They're attracted to they, 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 You know, yeah. And she, it was the saddest story ever, because when she bought this house, her and her husband bought this house, they specifically asked for a house that nobody had died in and everything, because she knows she has problems. So when they got a house that where somebody practiced Santeria and was doing all this stuff. Yeah, I felt sorry for her. It's I, like, yeah. uh, 
it's so not that's funny. Yeah, I don't get to go to all these like historical places and stuff and check out, but I try to help different families out. And it's 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 you, you've there's some amazing stories and some amazing people. The human mind, for one, is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I, uh, it's the, a lot of the, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, the mediums, I love to hear the stories, the mediums. I love to check out stories, the mediums. You know, like Chris Moon, you know, I, I was listening to him on Viddy Space one time. And I thought, oh, you know, I was listening to what he's saying. So I started to look up the history of the place and stuff. I found, like, who the people he was talking about. Yeah. Living, you know, and, and stuff. And I was like, okay, this guy's for real. And when he showed up at... uh well, he, he was on, like, online when they were one time at uh, Malvern Manor in Iowa. Uh, he was sitting there going, they, they, they're, he's watching you as you're sleeping and stuff. And he didn't know nothing about what I knew about. They didn't even know what I knew about the that guy was related to the Velisca axe murder. They didn't know... You know, and here he was just said, describing it. And I'm like, okay, this guy's for real. He's like a digital medium, like a like my my friend Sue. And I I just find that stuff fascinating. You know, people's gifts and stuff and I love hearing them stories. Um I sorry, I got a little confused there. Um Jed wants to know. Um, how, how you make your black salt? How I make black salt? I make black salt. Well, when I make black salt, I use charcoal discs. I use sea salt, and I put a little brick dust in it and stuff, and I grind it all together. And that's what I use. I and I use the the charcoal discs when I burn a lot of frankincense resin, and so I use the 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 charcoal discs from when I use the. They use to burn the frankincense and the resins. I burn frankincense, copal, and myrrh, and dragon's blood. I try to, like, cleanse my house all the time. Where do you find the dragon? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hold that sucker down. I drain him full blood. Um, I keep him in my backyard. Yeah. I do a tree. Is his name Pete? Yeah, no, that, no. that's a guy. That's Everybody a kid's name, right? names their dragon. Puff, Pete, Puff Come on. the magic dragon. Yeah, I brought college kids next door. I might have Puff the magic dragon over there. <laughs> um, so Ronald, I didn't type it in because it's too much to type, but um, we do have a call in line, but we it's um, I can't use the call in line when I have multiple people on like this, um, so. I would give you the number, but it would do no good right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the whole call-in thing, but um, as far as I know, it doesn't work when I have multiple people on. We're but technology I challenged. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Yeah. Yeah, I was on her. I'm like, yeah, technology challenged big time. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know. I think yeah. ghost hunting gets a bit too technical. Because, actually, what are you going to prove? Nobody's, if you, you know, my biggest thing is if video cameras and stuff, even if you catch the most awesome, awesome evidence, there's always going to be five or six assholes to say that's completely fake and they can do it on this and CG. And I just, like, I don't even show evidence no more. I, I just don't believe yeah. anything I see unless... I personally know the person and trust them. Yeah. Or if I know the location, know the setup, um, because there's too many variables that uh, that can happen to make you think you see something that don't see. Um, well, just, and I think. Go ahead. I just think, regardless of whether it's whether it's evidence caught by tools or whether it's information that we can share as psychic mediums. There is no way to prove it, unfortunately. You know, there's no, just, no. there's not. And it's that's, you know, that's the experience. ultimate goal. It's yeah. the ultimate goal that eventually someday we might be able to. But, you know, in the meantime, a, a lot of it is faith. And yeah. 
and believe in it and backing up the two together, you know, um, having an experience and then being able to back it up with a tool. That's huge. Or yeah. Anyway, yeah. Nice. No, just, you're completely right. Yeah. You I know, when we, when we do like private haunting, private investigations and stuff, a lot of times we, if when we do catch evidence or something, we put it on CD and we just, makes a CD and give it to the to the homeowner or the people and you know this is your proof this is your you you know it's real you know you can choose yeah. to do what you want with it and stuff and everything but it's not going to end up on YouTube I think our team put one film on YouTube and I think I put it on my site it was that disappearing paper at the cage bar in um, St. Paul no, that's a real damn thing. We should, we sent that to the Ghost Research Society, same one that verified the um, the Bachelor Groves um, for the photograph, the famous Bachelor Groves photograph. We said they could not find. There was two different views of this. You never believe how many people just like, oh, that's fake, that's fake, that's fake. No, and that really did happen, and it happened. And, you know, everybody in the bar that night knows it happened. They, you know, but. Yeah, you know, I I mean, unless you were there, unless you know that that was a blue moon beer ad, unless you were the beer distributor guy who hung it up there, unless you watched the whole eight hours of video and watched it hang there for five or six hours before it dis- disappeared on camera, you're not, you're not going to, and you cannot make a judgment off a of YouTube video. You just can't because the file's That's been compressed I- and... It's just, you know, so it's like, I don't even show that stuff no more. I show, Well, I showed you that apparition moving in the Malvern Mariner. I don't know what that was. That was some kind of fog stuff. But it, was, it reminded me of like it was checking all the trinkets and stuff and as it moved. But like I said, it, you put it on YouTube and people just tear it apart. And it's like, I don't, I don't see not that I don't believe. I just, I don't judge other people's stuff is what I meant. If that's yeah. Like, people no, send me no. stuff all the time. And I'm like, first of all, if I don't know the way the room's set up, I'm, I'm not going to judge it unless if it's a ghost you app can. and I you know can. it's a ghost app. Then I'll yeah. Out, well, but, yeah. You know, I see a lot of that too, but I just don't say anything anymore. There's a lot of there's a lot of groups that they make their whole time tearing other people down and stuff. And uh, you know, and just like when I told you, I took parapsychology classes and stuff. They have a real negative uh, uh, feeling towards ghost hunters, and and it kind of makes me a little upset with them. Is I I really love parapsychology. I I mean I you know I love reading about parapsychologists and stuff. But you know what? Hey, people are out there at least trying. They're out there trying to communicate. They're trying these different things, you know, and they might not be the right thing and stuff, but you're never going to scientifically prove there's a ghost because they don't go into a lab and say, hey, test me. So, I mean, don't knock them for at least trying, you know, and and I kind of get mad at them for that because... And stuff. I guess the one thing I agree with parapsychologists, I don't investigate at night. And I, I do if I'm like going with a group and that's what they do. But I don't like to investigate at night. And I like to see what's going on. I do and both. Stuff. Yeah. Well, you and know, I ghosts, do both at every location that is available to do both. Yeah. Not just one or the other. Um, but. Well, even P is better to catch at night and stuff when it's it's quiet. It's easier to pick up is what I think. In some locations, it's quieter at night, you know, but I think the same stuff can happen during the day that can happen at night. Um, Pat has a couple of really good points in him. Mama Pat, as some of us like to call her. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. Says, um, no two incidents of a haunting are ever going to be exactly the same. So how can it be proven? And then she goes on to say, I think the best you can come up with theories that fit the facts to the best extent possible, but it would still be a theory, not proof. I 1,000, 1 million percent agree with that. 
Um, oh yeah. She that's tried. why I always say I don't I don't say evidence and now I tease people about it. You know, I just collect data. Um, you know, and try to put it together because I, I can't prove it, but okay, this is what I have so far and you keep going. Um, but the- I collect experiences is what I think. Yeah. You know, if experiences that are caught, you know, on yeah. camera or whatever, but they're they're like I subject that to a different kind of yeah. data. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I agree. I think the co- I was going to say I think the closest we can get to proof though again is that combination of things. I exactly, mean Exactly, yeah. So I was out at Melbourne Manor last weekend and towards the end of the night it was just three of us that were kind of walking through the manor and it was Josh, the owner, myself and then Sharla. And be, I'm able to talk to him directly obviously. And so there was there's one new spirit that's there who hadn't been there before any of the times that I'd been there and he was kind of talking to me and following me around and stuff. And so I started talking out loud because I know it's always frustrating when I can hear it in my head and I don't share it with everybody else. Um, so I started saying out loud what he was saying. And it, I said something, I don't even remember what the first thing was. Um, and um, I saw Josh's mouth kind of drop open, like, really? And, oh, because I said what his name was. I said his name was Jeff. And then he kind of looked at me like, that's amazing. And then I said something else because the guy was just talking to me. And I think I, I, I don't remember the exact words, but it was like he said, I'm, I'm new here. I haven't been here very long or something along those lines. And Josh's mouth just drops open. He said, so nobody has shared this information. But for the last couple of weeks, the people who have been here have been getting that exact information. Jeff, he's new here. He hasn't been here long. He's like, there is no way you could have known that, Kelly. No way you could have known that. Oh, you know, wow. See, oh, that's great. That's the validation of both the tools and the medium. You know, that's that's as close as you can get to proof. I don't oh, know. That's yeah. just my opinion. But no, no, you're right. You know, in parapsychology, they, you know, they, I never wrote about this in the book that, you know, it might be that uh, over a hundred years of research, it might be that humans and animals are the only ones that can actually see these spirits and detect them. You know, and stuff because, yeah, that that's all we have right now and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and your mom was asking about who tests psychics and stuff. It is called the Brit. The Ryan uses uh, called the Winbridge Institution Research Center Institution, and uh, and the Forever Family Foundation. They test uh, mediums and psychics, and they certify them. And I think the only like TV medium psychic that I could recognize on their list is Kim Russo. But she's a, a windbred. They te- they. This is a research like facility, and they Which they. One? Sorry. Windbridge. Oh, okay. Which one is Kim Russo? Is she the Long Island one, or is she the one no. that does the the um the celebrity? Haunting? Celebrity. The celebrity okay. one. Yeah. No. Sorry. See, but but even with something like that, I guess testing a psychic. I guess I have issues with that because. I can want to talk to Shay, so I pick up my cell phone and I give her a call. There's no guarantee she's going to answer the damn phone, you know? So to test a psychic and say, oh, well, it didn't work that second for you. You must not be real. Well, no, that's not how this works. Same they are not parlor the same, monkeys. They don't perform on demand. It's the same thing for haunted locations. If exactly. You, if people yeah, that aren't yeah. mediums yeah. don't understand that. You can go to a location that has all this activity, there's no guarantee something's going to come through. Exactly. It's the same thing. Yep. They, no, they actually, they, they take that into account and stuff. And uh, it's not that kind of testing. But they actually, the... Uh, they actually, they hook up the meters to the brain why the person is getting a message, and, and they do that kind of stuff. And the ones that are certified, the Forever Family Foundation is, they help, like, grief counseling. And, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they, they, they understand that they, they understand that they, not all the time a person is going to come through, because... Actually, I've been to, I've been to a haunted location, and I am not picking up the same thing that this person is picking up. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, 
I mean, Gail, and I, I find it interesting, and then I can't say that they're wrong, because when I go to look up what they're picking up, I find the person, you know, and stuff. I, 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 yeah, I think it is just, it's an experience, and it's, sub- it's who does subject that spirit to want to connect with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly, you know. I mean, there's well, people's energies and frequencies and stuff sometimes don't match with things. Uh, I don't always, I don't always, uh, okay, one of the ladies, she's more calmer and gentler and more childlike. She gets children to come up to her all the time, children's parents, and talking like blah, 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 blah. I don't get that. I get the cranky asshole men or, or <laughs> the, you, the think, yoo-hoos. Yeah, or yoo-hoos or, or, or get that. I, I pick upon a lot of that energy and I think that has a lot to do with me. Like I told you before, Shay, I'm not a warm, fuzzy person. I couldn't do a gallery reading because I'd be like, well, if you quit cheating on your wife, you wouldn't have these <laughs> goddamn problems. Uh, you know, I... <laughs> That's probably and why I, I'm, I'm not a medium. I'm yeah, not, yeah, you know, exactly, this. exactly. You know, and I don't get the warm, fuzzy feeling. I can't, I can't just force myself to be nice to people. Yeah, so I have a problem being I, diplomatic sometimes. So I think that that's the reason why I, I when I go to haunted locations, I don't get the nice, friendly spirits because they're like, no, she's too bristly. I we don't want to communicate with her. You know. Yeah, well, see, Pat, I was, Pat's almost on the same um, lines of thinking as me. She said, it would be interesting to see what a message does to your brain waves it, um, if it, you know, changes the aura when you're talking with the spirit. I was thinking, like, I would love to see, see something on, like, MRIs or to see what yep. part of the brain is picking that up. I'm sure it's... It, that's what, that's what the wind bridge does. That's what the wind bridge. Yep, that's the kind of testing they do, and stuff. In the Forever Family, they do testing like uh, grief testing for like grief counseling and stuff. And then they test mediums for that. What do you, What do you think, Kelly? Do I mean? I just I would love to see if like a part of your brain works differently than well, your brain works. Mine doesn't, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like. Um, well, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. And I've actually, I've had the opportunity to see what it does to my aura when I, when I'm getting messages. Oh, um, wow. And it, it just happened by accident, actually, because I'd been at one of our expos. And after the expo was done, I was sitting with the aura people getting mine done. And I had my hand on the machine and you kind of leave it laying there for a little bit so it can kind of like calibrate to you. But one of the ladies that I had read for during the show was on her way out And she says, I'm sorry, I hate to ask you a question, but I had one follow-up question. Is it okay? And I said, yeah, that's fine. And so she asked me a question, and I tapped in, got her an answer, and she went on her merry little way. And we get done, and I look at everybody, and they're kind of staring at me with this slack jaw look on their face. I'm like, what? And they're like, you should have seen what your aura did. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And so then we started messing with it because I wanted to see it. I hadn't been paying attention. you know. And it would. It would totally change when I... Tap in. I don't know what else to call it other than that, you know, but when I started getting the messages or, you know, and then just kind of figuring out how we can control it or not and control it, it was super cool. Um, so, yeah, if my aura can change that much, much, what's my brain doing? Because that's yeah, my spirit. See. That's the spirit side of it. The brain is science side of it. So yeah. what's your brain doing? Luna should tell us she's science. <laughs> Oh, God, the human <laughs> brain is amazing. Amazing stories. Have you ever um, read The Gold Leaf Lady? No, I haven't. Oh, my God. This woman was amazing. She was a, a psychic medium. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick here so I get the name right. Oh, no. <laughs> It, nothing ever works when you want it. Oh to. no, no! My computer is like, let's just mess you up. Yeah, welcome to my life. My computers <laughs> love doing that. Okay, baby, down at the bottom. Was that OSHA? Good OSHA or a bad OSHA, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Um, I'll just pinch it up here. I'm just so while she's doing that, we mentioned expos a couple times. Um, so we do have, um, for anybody who's new and doesn't know this, I think you might all know this from looking at chat. Um, but we host five psychic and paranormal expos throughout Iowa, um, in the year. Well, it's been four this year. I'll be five, but we always have at least one or a photographer that's a vendor. Usually we'll have two or three different ones and they all do it a little bit different. So it's kind of fun to, to have the different ones there. But, um, if you've never had your aura photo taken, it's, it's super fun and it can change from time to time, depending on what's going on in your life. And I've never seen, seen it at all. Like never. Oh, really? I've never even seen it online. Oh, wow. My husband's is amazing. He looks like Jesus because of his beard, and he has a big, like, (laughs) white glow around him. It's, like, crazy. I was like, wow, mine's, like, crappy. I got a red circle, a gold circle, and a black circle above my head. That was my aura. (laughs) And they took it twice and and stuff, and she had the lady. This was at the uh, witch's um, ball in Denver and she's had no explanation for it and I'm like the only thing I can think of is that I had an obsidian crystal I had an obsidian necklace and I think that that blocked it because I do that when I go into places like that I I have a problem going into public places I could never do what you do because what I end up hearing is I end up hearing the people's problems And Walmart, for me to go to Walmart, I can go in there, be happy-go-lucky, and my husband says I come out there and I might as well be the exorcist lady because I'm spitting nails and piss. Because, you know, I just, I don't know, I, I, I don't have the capability as, like, mediums to block this stuff. I've tried their... I've tried shields and everything and stuff, and I don't block nothing. I absorb their crap, and and, and I, I think that's why I'm such an introvert. Mine was yeah. self-preservation, because if I didn't figure out how to block that crap, I was going to lose my damn mind. So Yeah, I know. I know exactly how you feel, because that's exactly how I feel. It's like, I, you know, it's a good thing my husband has been married to me for 28 years, and he just <laughs> knows that... You know, when I come out of Walmart, I'm evil. You know? <laughs> it's like, it's like I get evil there. before I even get halfway to the store <laughs> thinking of it. <laughs> I'm not even a psychic. And it drives me crazy. Just like, well, that's just people. Yeah. That's the problem is people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was going to tell you about Kate, Katie, the gold leaf lady. She was, this is a parapsychological, parapsychological investigation. And um, it was, it's a book written by St- Stephen Broad. But um, anyway, this woman was medium and stuff. She was poor and she was from Tennessee and stuff. And, and, uh, she had promise with her husband and stuff and he never, cause they didn't have no money or whatever. And her, she started to manifest like gold leaf paper on her face and they tested her and they, they were, did this on, this happened on camera, this happened and thing, you know, and stuff. And here it was her mind. She was, she she had gifts and stuff, and she could she she had reported people reported that she'd aport things in her hand and stuff, and what it was was she had such trauma from her husband and everything he was such an asshole that somehow her brain was doing this was creating this, and I just think these stories are flipping amazing and stuff. Another one. Uh, a uh, lady um, uh, had problems with her husband. Her husband was ab- ab- abusing her, beating her and stuff. And every time they would take a picture in the house, uh, it, it, lines would appear on the picture. It would say, help me, help me, help, help this or and stuff. And when they ended up checking into it, here it was that this lady or her her, um, somehow she was projecting out and it was showing up on the film as help. It was, help it was um, like, 
I think I've heard of that one. It, it was the yep. um, instant, the instant camera. Yeah. Uh, Polaroid. Mm hmm. Is that what it was? Thinking? Yeah, and it was projecting out on the. Yeah, yeah it's a it's this story from Quebec in the eighties, yeah. and it, and uh, it was projecting out on the film. And these are the stories I told you before that. Um, I wish I'd make a TV show about that. The real like case stories that they, you know, I mean, that's just fascinating. They, you know, Jeff, the talking mongoose, hey, Henry Price would investigate that. He, he more or less thought it was, uh, 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 the guy producing the voice and stuff, but. I was yep. going to say, you're going to get the same thing with those as you deal with any of the paranormal yeah. videos that come out though. People yep. are going to say it's not real. Oh, yeah, of course. So, you know, they're, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter because parapsychologists, it is, they're, you know, it's kind of like a pseudoscience and they like to beat up on parapsychologists and stuff. But I, I find a lot of their stories fascinating. The they're, they're Bor- Borley Rectory, uh, the famous mm-hmm. oh, yeah. uh, the haunting yeah. at Enfield Manor, you know, Enfield Street or Enfield House yep. or whatever. Enfield. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I know what you're talking about, but I can't think now. With it Enfield either, but... Haunting. I get... Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're amazing. I love them stories and stuff. I like the real stories. I don't so much like the Hollywood version, but I mean, because there was witness, you know, in the infill haunting and stuff. A Lloyd, I, guy Lloyd, um, Playfair. If you, I, I listened to, uh, him on a podcast there was multiple witnesses that watched a couch float out of the upstairs of the window and then float back into the house. <laughs> Something was going on in that house. So it's like, I, I, so that's the stuff that keeps me going. Yeah, it's fascinating. I, I like hearing the stories too, but yeah. even with what I do, even knowing what there is out there, I still, I look at it and I'm just like, mm, really? Um, yeah, I'm a horrible skeptic too. Oh, I, I know, I know exactly how you feel. I, I'm that way too. I, uh, I had to deal with, you know, a lot of times I'd go to these places and they would say this and this and this is my ghost and stuff. And I'm thinking, oh, well, that is not what I'm getting. I'm sorry, right? you know, <laughs> and, 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 and I have to go by that's when I go back and look into the history and stuff. Well, this is the person that I was picking up and stuff. And, uh, and sometimes it don't sound well with people, you know. They they just know they have three ghosts and a demon in their house. Yeah. And one of yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. One of the one of the stories that sticks in my brain so well is we had uh, got called into a house, and this woman was just absolutely convinced that it was her ex husband that was haunting her and and tormenting her. And we were gonna. We'd gone down once for a day walk, and we were going to go back and do, like, a full investigation type thing. And she was blaming everything, everything on her husband. Well, turned out the night of the investigation, I was sick, and I couldn't go. And so I'm home, and lo and behold, here comes her husband, her ex-husband, and he's like, you need to go down and talk to them because they're blaming everything on me, and it's not me. And I'm like, dude, I'm sick. Leave me alone. (laughs) You know? And... He just, he kept coming all night long. He's like, no, no, they're blaming everything on me. You have to, you please go down there and explain to her, this isn't me. And I'm like, I no. know it's not you, but I'm sick. I can't, you know, because literally I was gross sick. Um, and I'm like, he just wouldn't leave me alone. So finally I'm like, fine. And I go down there just totally, it was a sinus infection. Um, and I walk in and I'm like, okay, I am here for 20 minutes. <laughs> Sit down. This is what's going on. <laughs> You know, she didn't want to hear it. She did not want to hear it. She was absolutely convinced that it was her, her ex-husband. And, you know, the best I can do is say, look, I have passed your message along. I cannot force you to believe this. Leave me alone. So once oh, you did gosh. that, does that satisfy, did that satisfy him? Like, okay, you tried, I'll leave you alone or. Oh, uh, he still wasn't persistent? happy. He came back a couple times that night. Like they're yeah. still, bl- I'm like, I did my job. I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> He's like, I know, but I'm just frustrated. I'm like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel sorry for that. Yeah I, I, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. I, 
kind of dealt with. We went to this private investigation. I won't even say the town, but this lady, this lady was convinced that she had picked up a spirit at the hospital in Omaha or whatever and brought him home with her. And because this lady, other lady who was a psychic medium, who was her housemaid, had told her that this is who she had picked up. So when we went there, you know, and before I went there, I wrote down my impressions, you know, of the house and stuff and everything. It's a brick house, and there's a lamp post, and there's an old lady. And when we get there, it's a brick house, and we go in there and stuff, and we had to talk in, and they, they had a lamp post from the nursing home. It was out back that they brought from their nursing home and put it on their porch, and that was the lamppost. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. And But she, I wasn't picking up this guy. I was picking up an old lady, and I went and looked at the pictures on her wall, and here was this old lady. And here, what I figured out is that, uh, well, we did, and we had a hard time telling the lady, was that this little psychic medium lady was actually stealing from her and her uh her mother-in-law her 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 husband's grandmother whose house it was was trying to tell them and was really pissed off yeah you know and she was trying to tell them you know that this lady's taken from them. that's why she was tormenting the the housekeeper lady and when i i kind of wondered and we all figured this out it wasn't it wasn't nothing to do with mediumship really it, it, when i walked in she she knew right away there's something about mediums. You know when somebody else is a medium. She walked in and she knew she goes, "You have gifts and and stuff." And I'm so well. I you know I'm I I just like to call myself sensitive because I don't know what I am. I'm just me. Yeah. And I, and, and, and I'm just me. And she left right away and would not come back until I was gone. Well, I think she knew I could pick her up. And stuff, and then the lady, the nurse lady, is part. Who's the head of the team? She's actually the one at first said, "I think that maid is stealing money from these people." You know, because you know she was like taking like gold watches because they were blaming the spirit for stealing gold watches and stuff. It was no, it's the fucking maid. Maid stealing from you and trying to tell you a ghost is doing mm-hmm. it. Like you know. Jeez. And, and and you do have a ghost in your house, but she's just there because it's her grandson, and and this is her house, and and she worked all her life, you know. And she's frustrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They you never. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and then the medium had told him the right name. I mean, she because the name was Johnny or whatever. And stuff. Well, here that was this lady's husband's name was John. That was his grandfather's name was John. So it, it was his. It was his grandparents that were just emphatic that that, that lady was stealing from him. And we tried to tell her that, but she didn't want no problem because she just knew that this lady we just was helping her with this ghost. And I'm like, no, she's not. Well, and that's what makes it so hard for the ones who are legitimate and doing this. Really, you know, it's just because they'll hear somebody say, oh, I'm a medium, so here's what I'm getting. And how do they know what to believe? Um, there's a house uh, a friend of mine owns that I've, I've been into a couple times. And she actually had me come over and do a walkthrough because she wanted to know what was there because I kept talking to her son. And I get it. She wanted to know if it was safe. But she had some other young man who came in the house and told her, oh, you've got something evil. You absolutely have to clear this out. Your children are in danger. No, oh my God. You know? And she called me. She's like, I'm terrified, Kelly. What do I do? And I'm like, well, that's not at all what I've ever gotten or I'm getting now, but let us come back, you know? So, um, yeah, we went back over and there was nothing there. And I actually, I took some other people with me. So it wasn't just me that, you know, so it wasn't just one person's word against another one person's word, but I'm just like, come on, this is crazy. Don't scare this poor woman if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, don't get me wrong. There is, 
there is bad stuff that's never been human, but it's rare. It is you know, so rare. It's, it, it is it's so rare. rare. It, 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 and it's rare, and, and, and usually it has to be invited in. It's usually something that somebody is, has done, has, has, has messed with. You and know, and invited into their lives and stuff, and but I, I don't. It's not something that just all of a sudden decides to to come mess with you because you truly, if you really truly believe in demons, do you think demons are going to mess with parlor tricks? If they're angelic being, right. a supreme being and stuff, no, they're going to fuck you up. They're not going to mess with parlor tricks, moving stuff, flashing lights, or whatever. No, you just got to honor spirit and stuff. Well, and that's the thing is most of the time, most of the time what happens, they're just assholes. That's all it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, there's bored spirits. If you're around for 100 goddamn years, you're bored. You're going to mess with people. Yeah. I, you know, I'm going to mess with people when I die. I'm sorry. I, You know, I, there's some people, you know, I mean, it's just human nature and stuff. And a lot of things that are moving in a house and stuff and everything might not have anything to do with the spirit. They might be have something to do with the you know, human. The human mind is what does it, whether it's their person is dead or or alive, it is uh, telekinesis. It is mind over matter? You know whether it, mm-hmm. it's a it's a conscious. You know, so I find all that stuff fascinating. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a dead person doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny. It's the mind works in mysterious ways. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, yeah. That's my saying too, Luna. <laughs> if you're an asshole in life, you're probably going to be an asshole in laughter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. we got to start wrapping this up. I, it's already, I can't believe we've been on. Oh, I am sorry. I'm yep, no, no, yep, yep. Don't ever be sorry. <laughs> I love talking with you guys, though. Because, see, I don't really get, you know, I live here in Nebraska. I don't really get to talk to other people like, you know. Well, what we will yeah. have you back. I, I, sure. I, the weirdness, you know, it's like, I'm going to talk to other weird people. <laughs> <laughs> it, it went by quick. <laughs> oh, thank you. I had a good time. It's a so, good birthday present. Yes, and I'm so happy you spent your birthday with us. Both your books are available on Amazon, correct? Yeah. And yeah. I will share, I will reshare that information to the parents. Oh, you're page. so sweet. Thank um, you. You're welcome, um, Kelly. What do you What do you have coming up? Anything uh, Anything big coming up anytime soon? Um, I have got a little bit of downtime coming up, so. Um, well, I wasn't expecting it, that answer. Wow. I know. Woo-hoo! Well, by okay, by a little bit of downtime, I'm talking like two weeks. <laughs> That's a lot for you. I know, right? Um, so I've got. Well, I'll be helping you host the show still. Um, yeah. until you don't need me anymore. And then um, I'll be on your show with you and Jen on the 30th. The Sunday, yeah, the Skeptic and the Psychic. That's oh, I'll have to listen to that. Yes. And I guess, um, oh, well, you know what? I guess I have a little something fun going on. <laughs> so the <laughs> starting in January, I forget, you know, I need a calendar and a keeper. Um Starting in January on Wednesdays, I'll be hosting my own show Woo-hoo! Um, called The Haunted Realm, and we'll be talking about all things uh, metaphysical and paranormal and all that fun stuff. And um, uh, yes, Pat, uh, I've got a public investigation coming up at the end of January at the Granger House. Um, it's an old Victorian uh, middle class home, and that's a museum currently here in Cedar Rapids, Marion. And uh, it's a super cool place. The matriarch spirit that's there, she's just fun. She's so much fun. Um, but, yeah, so that's coming up. And I've got a couple spots left for that at this point, I think. Um, and we will re- we will reshare that on Paranormal Buzz, too. Yeah. So I, I keep sharing. Okay, I lied. I don't have any downtime. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm seeing the chat. Amy's now feeling you, like, <laughs> I, I see yeah, it. Yeah. In February, I've got a, a retreat that's going to be going on, and 
I'm going to do some, um, not public events, but uh, probably put some investigations in January and starting to do some recording. So, uh, nice. yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. <laughs> what announcements? Um, there is no show Sunday due to the uh, holiday. Um, the skeptic and the psychic will not be on, be on Sunday, but as Kelly said, the 30th, Kelly will be on with Jen and I. Um, there's no show Monday because it's Christmas Eve. Um, so B squared will be back January 7th. I believe it is. Um, of course I'll be here next Friday. Kelly will be here next Friday. I'll be here next Friday. Yes. Yes. Um, yay. Let's see. I'll try to do some shout outs here. Uh, Ron, to answer your question, the museum is located in Marion, Iowa. It's Cedar Rapids, Marion. And it's called the Granger House. Yeah, we'll definitely share that out um, again. I do my best on keeping up with. Oh, you do amazing. I love you. You're awesome. I try. Yes. You know, let's see. Um, anybody that's not in chat but is listening whether you're listening live or listening later thank you um well, and hope you got it yeah. let's see and thank you matt matt says great show he kind of has to say that but thank you matt <laughs> well he doesn't have to i mean one of these days he could come out and say man you guys just really sucked yeah <laughs> he would say that privately probably of course then we would cry and i don't think he's quite that mean so, no, no, he's not mean. <laughs> he's an ass sometimes, but I think he's mm -hmm. my ex, so I can say that, you know. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we have Mama Pat, we have Amy, we have Luna, we have Ronald, we have Matthew. Um, we have Kim Purvis and Jen Kim, B. Jen B. And Wolf. We have Wolf. That crazy Shay Carroll lady. Wait, no, you have to say that she was there. Go ahead. Who was there, Shay? She, I can say Shay Carroll. No, I want the whole thing. I can't, man. Damn it, Shay, say it. <laughs> I'm still practicing. You know, two years ago, when I started doing this, it was even worse. I can say Sherry Ann Carroll. No, oh, you're not supposed to think about it. It takes all the Sherry, fun out of it. Sherry Ann Carroll? Carroll? <laughs> Carol, Carol? 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 <laughs> Carol, I'm much better than I was. Takes all uh, the fun out of it. I know. <laughs> um, um, okay, sorry, we lose focus here. So there's Ronald, Squirrel. Well, you know. Um. Yes, Ronald. I'm, I'm forgetting somebody. This chat was busy. If I missed you, quick, say something. It's yeah. Did you already say Miss Luna? Yes, I did, Miss Luna. Okay. I believe I did. I believe I did. Okay, so. If we missed anybody, we didn't mean to. Yeah, say no. I do my best. I can't scroll all the way back. We have about 200 comments. Um, so I think we got everybody, though. If not, we'll send extra love next time. Thank you, Wolf. Yeah, I believe I said Wolf. Have you ever heard Jen say Wolf? I love it. We'll have to get her to say it next week. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you. Together thank you, too. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thank you for coming and listening to my craziness. <laughs> you were a blast. You were hilarious. Oh, oh, you yeah. guys are good. I love you. All right. You two hold on one quick second. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. See you next Friday. For more information regarding what Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs>